So we are going to talk about physical layer concepts um, now. And um, previously I used to teach, as I said, the physical layer is part of the basic networking course, but now the basic networking course has um, a book that does not allow us to teach this, so I'm going to repeat much of it as to what we have done. So we'll talk about coding. And we will talk about what is phase shift coding, coding, what is QAM, what is decibels. Then we will talk about channel capacity, Nyquist theorem, Shannon's theorem, Hamming distance, theoretical uh, concepts, including error corrections. Then we talk about antenna reflections, diffractions, and multipath and propagation. And some of the recent developments in physical layer, which are spread spectrum, code division, multiple access, OFDM. In double quotes. There are lots of um, new words here, but they will all become clear as we go along. But before we get into while, uh, any of these, first thing you have to understand is the spectrum. So all of the wireless is uses electromagnetic waves. All wireless waves are electromagnetic waves. And light is also electromagnetic wave. Electricity is also electromagnetic wave, <coughs> all right? But these are electromagnetic waves of different frequencies. For example, the electric current is has a frequency of what? 60 cycles per second. The frequencies that we use for wireless are, we, we, we measure them in gigahertz, 2.4 gigahertz. Giga is a billion, right? So the wireless frequencies that we use in Wi-Fi is 2.4 billion hertz per second, billion cycles per second. All right? Light is in terahertz. It's the same electromagnetic wave. But when the electromagnetic wave has low frequency, it cannot travel by itself. It, it needs a wire. When it becomes higher frequency, then it can travel in the air. When it becomes even higher frequency, it becomes light and travels in a vacuum and so on and so forth, right? Actually, so, so the idea is all of these are electromagnetics, but they're in different parts of the spectrum. If you are in this part, that is the way wireless we use for radio. If you're in this part, that is the wireless we use for television. If you're in this part, that is the wireless we use for satellite. If you're in this part, we use wireless for your local area networks and wide area networks. And if you're in this part, that is the light. This is the red. Before that is the infrared. And after that is ultraviolet. So we will be talking mostly about these frequencies. Somewhere from few hundred megahertz to few gigahertz, always less than 11 gigahertz. Why less than 11 gigahertz? Because after 11 gigahertz, the electromagnetic waves start traveling in a straight line. They don't go around the buildings. So you cannot use it for things like cellular phone, where you might be standing behind a building. Then they become more like light. Light cannot go behind a building. Right? Sound can. Sound actually is not electromagnetic, but sound has a lower frequency. And um, so it can go around. Lower frequencies can go around. So there are other effects of frequencies that we'll talk about later on. Just to tell you one, that the lower frequencies can go farther distances. So if you somebody gave you a spectrum in 1 megahertz or 10 megahertz or something like that, they will go farther distances. But those are used for radio and television because they want to go 50 miles and 100 miles. And the higher frequencies which they cannot use are given to us, the technical guys, to say, okay, all right, can you use this for doing your data? Yes, we can. So we use 2.4 gigahertz for data, and then we have a challenge as to how we can go far with that one. If they gave us higher frequency than here, like they give us 60 gigahertz, it will not go very far. After one kilometer, we struggle to get it any further. So two things we know. If it is higher frequency, then it goes in a 
straight line. Second thing, it doesn't go very far. Two things you should remember, fundamentals. So lower frequencies are better for two reasons. One, because they can go around. Second, they go far. So what does this frequency thing look like? They are basically sine waves. Right? You put a, throw a stone on water in a lake, what you see is a sine wave. And a sine wave has an amplitude, top to bottom, and a cycles per second. How many cycles per second? So if you count the number of peaks, that will tell you how many cycles you have. And if you stand at one point in the, in the lake, and then you see how many cycles have gone through, that is cycles per second, in one second. All right? So this has a different amplitude than that. They both have the same cycles. These two have same amplitude, but frequency. Their frequency is different, their amplitude is different. And mathematically, we write them down as A sine of 2 pi f t plus theta. f is the frequency, t is the time, pi is the constant, sine is the sine cosine, sine, and A is the amplitude. So this one will have half amplitude, and but the same f, this one will have different f's. All right, but what is theta? Theta is what we call the phase. If you take if this one and then you move it, if zero is here at zero, this is zero is at some other place, right? So they are different in phase, starting point. So those are the things we need to know about every signal. We need to know what is its amplitude, what is its frequency, and what is its phase. Okay, so let me see. If suppose the amplitude is small, what is wrong with that signal? Huh? It's a very weak signal, it will not go very far. On the other hand, if its frequency is very high, what is wrong with that? Uh, it cannot go few kilometers, right? And, and then it may not be able to go behind a building. So we have to have the right amplitude, we have to have the right frequency. What about the phase? Well, suppose I have a signal which is this signal, and somebody else has a signal which is exactly the same signal but at 180 degree phase, which means everywhere I have positive, they have a negative. And wherever I have a negative, they have a positive. What will happen when the two combine? Cancel out. So the phase is important for cancelling out the noise, for figuring out how to block, right? So those are the three important variables, amplitude, frequency, and phase. Now the frequency is measured in cycles per second, but since it takes so many words, we call it hertz because that's the guy who invented it, or invented the idea. So <laughs> hertz is simply cycles per second. All right, now the waves travel. So when you put a, throw a stone in the water, the waves travel. Similarly, the radio waves, when you start from an antenna, they travel. So what is the relationship between the distance and the frequency? Basically, if you have one cycle per second, they will travel certain amount in one second. So the distance traveled by one cycle is called the wave length. And it is very easy to see in water. You throw a stone in the water, takes two peaks, the distance between those two peaks is the wave length. That is how much it will travel in one cycle. Right? So the distance between two peaks is the wave length. And if the wave length is lambda, then if the signal is traveling at nu, the nu times t, the t is the time, is lambda. t is the cycle time. And therefore, if you bring this t on the other side, 1 upon t is f frequency, lambda f is nu. So you take any signal, takes its wavelength, take its frequency, multiply it together, you should get its speed. And all electromagnetic signals travel at the same speed in the same medium. In a different medium, they will travel differently. But if you take light or wireless, they all travel at the same speed. 
as long as they are in the same media. You change the media, they travel differently. So if you take the light in vacuum, there is a speed, 300 meters per microsecond, the wireless will travel at the same speed. But if you bring it into the air, the speed is different. If you take it into the fiber, the light speed is different. So the electromagnetic speed depends upon the medium, but once the speed is there, then you can, if given the frequency, you can calculate the wavelength. Given the wavelength, you can calculate the frequency. Sometimes we talk about the wavelength, sometimes we talk about the frequency. Generally, whichever is, okay, well, I, I, I was going to make a statement. Let me just say this one. Generally, for the, wave, for, this, for, the, for the wireless, we talk frequencies. So when I say what signal you have, we say I have 2.4 gigahertz signal. In the light, we talk about wavelength. When you say what signal you have in the light, you say I have 750 nanometer, all right? But 750 nanometer can be translated into few terahertz by knowing the speed. The speed is 300 meters per microsecond. Very easy to remember and make sure that you remember it from now on. 300 meters per microsecond is the speed of light. The speed of electricity in the wire is 200 meters per microsecond. So it's different, it's lower. Think like that, okay? So 300 microsecond per mi 300 meters per microsecond is same as 3 times 10 raised to 8 meters per second. That is the speed of light in free, free space. So given lambda, f, and nu, you can call it nu or v, but lambda is the wavelength, F is the frequency and nu is the speed. So you can calculate one from the other. All right. So we introduced the concept of frequency and wavelength. Now let's look at the power distribution. So if you have a sine wave, it has one frequency, just one frequency, right? If you have single frequency sine wave, and then if you were to plot the power of this sine wave on a, on a graph where frequency is on the x-axis, then your power will just look like an impulse at one point because there is the whole power of this is concentrated at that frequency. There is no other frequency. So on a frequency, this is, uh, on the other hand, if you were to plot as a function of time where the power is, the power would be everywhere, all over because the, there is some power at time t equal to zero, some at time t equal to one, and so on and so forth. So, so but on the frequency graph, it will look like an impulse. Um, if you have a symbol, a, a signal which is at three times the frequency, the, it will look an impulse at three times that frequency, right? 3f. And if you add up those two, the resulting thing will look more like a square pulse, square wave, right? And this will have a power spectrum where you have some power at A and some power at 3A, uh, 3A, sorry, some power at F and some power at 3F, and so on and so forth. So you can keep adding more and more uh, what we call harmonics. As you add more, let's say you add fifth harmonic and seventh harmonic and so on and so forth, this will become flatter and flatter and more and more like a square wave. So actually, a real square wave actually is not only the frequency of that signal, but also 3F, 5F, 7F, and so on and so forth, and decreasing power. So when we do these analysis of how far things goes and where it goes, we generally look at this power um, spectrum. So this is the spectrum and this is the power. On the y-axis, I say the amplitude, which really means how much power there is at that frequency. And generally, it doesn't have to be just impulses. It could be a continuous graph. All right, so that is what we call frequency domain. Frequency domain means we are plotting with frequency as the x-axis. This is time domain. On the left side is time domain because we are plotting x-axis the time. So whatever is sinusoidal on the time domain, actually here it shows up as a frequency, as an impulse on the frequency domain, and. Um, and, and so, so basically, we, we look at both both domains and uh, for different reasons. So, if you want a square wave here, 
then you get a corresponding spectrum on the frequency domain. And so this is time domain signal, this is frequency domain signal. So a signal can be plotted both in frequency domain and in time domain, right? When you have a signal or a wave, electromagnetic wave that we were talking about, then it has, it's a sine function. If it is a sine function, then we can look at it as a sine wave in the time domain or we can look at it as an impulse in the frequency domain. Next concept, how do we measure the power? And it turns out the power is generally measured in watts. So you buy a bulb, it says so many watts. You buy a device, it says so many watts, right? However, when we deal with the signals, the power goes down exponentially or logarithmically. So for the signal engineers, it is much easier to talk in terms of log of power rather than power itself. So they don't talk in watts, they talk in log of watts. When you have any media, if you take, put the power in, P in, and you get the power out, P out, the ratio of the two, if you take log base 10, that is how much power they say we lost. P in is the power we put in, P out is the power we got, and you take the ratio of that, take a log of that, and that is the power we, that is the loss of the power, and it is measured in bell. Bell is B-E-L-L -L for the Graham Bell. However, somebody misspelled it, or you know, just shortened it to B-E-L. All right, so it's named after Graham Bell, and it is Bell, right? Now, however, Bell is too big, so generally we talk about one-tenth of a Bell, and one-tenth of a del Bell is decibel, dB. So from now on, every time we talk about power, we talk about dB. And dB comes by taking the power, taking a log of it, and then base 10, and then multiplying by 10. We can also talk about voltage ratios, but as you know, voltage is, power is equal to voltage squared divided by the resistance. Some of you have learned that in the physics, right? R power equal to current square times resistance, I square R. And if you have learned that, then you know that the power is proportional to the square of the voltage, and therefore, if you put the V in square divided by V out square, you get that is square out and you get 2 here, 20. So if, if suppose I gave you the input voltage to a, to a wire and I gave you the output voltage and I asked you how much is the power loss, you will use this formula. You will take V out divided V in divided by V out and, um, and then and log base 10 and then multiply by 20, that many dB. Here's an example. Suppose I take a wire and I put 10 milliwatt in it and I get 5 milliwatt out of it, right? Because 5 milliwatt is lost in the wire. Then the attenuation is 10 times log base 10 of 10 by 5, which is 2. Log of 2 base 10 is 0.3. Multiply by 10 is 3. So 3 dB means half. Right? And this is something that we remember. So if those of us who deal with the signals and so on and so forth, we remember that 3 dB is, is factor of 2. Just keep remembering. Because the thing is, the log of 2 is 0.3 and therefore it is 3 dB. Similarly, if suppose I gave you 100 milliwatt in and the output is 1 milliwatt, then how much is the loss? 20. So that is a channel, actually we, I would use the word channel here from not wire, because in the wireless, we don't have a wire, so we call it a channel. So a wireless channel which reduces the power from 100 to 1 has a loss of 20 dBs. 